And so next week you'll be using your dibromide that you made a while back that you have in your drawer. Uh, last questions, guys. Tertiary carbon? Uh, yes, leaving groups on tertiary. What do you know about that? There's more space. Present. Action. Which route is best, guys? The top group. Somebody said leaving groups on tertiary carbon. What do we know about that? It's fine. That it's means it's true. easier for it to leave because it's there's more stuff on it, on that carbon. But, and so by what mechanism? SN, we want that for SN1, not SN2. Okay. Well, SN2, so leaving group of picture for We want the leaving group on a primary. Oh, yeah. So the bottom one should be working. Okay, we, we, we may not have, have stated something yet. What type of nucleophiles do you need for SN2? Oh, yeah, it would be the bottom. Strong? It would be the bottom. Strong. Yeah. Okay. What type of nucleophile do we have here? What type of the bottom. Do we have here? Stronger or weak? No. Let's, let's yeah. go back. Let's go back. We need to go back. Maybe the bottom. Maybe the bottom. We need to go back. Okay, which of the ones up there are strong? Okay, guys, we've covered, we've covered this. Okay. Alright, showtime. Okay. Strong anions or sp3 amines. That's an anion. Strong. Okay. Strong nucleophiles. What we have, we've said that SN2 requires strong nucleophile. Okay. What we have not said yet is, if we have a strong nucleophile, it will be SN2. Okay. These are SN2 reactions. Which reaction is best? The bottom arm. The bottom. Bottom one, why? Because leaving group is on primary carbon. Can you do this reaction up here? No, there's going to be too much stare. It's going to be crowded. Staring, stare attendance. Uh huh. Leaving group is on tertiary carbon. And we 
can refer back to something that was written right here. I gave you three exclamation points, add a couple more. Never do SN2 when it turns to your daylight. Or tosylate. Or any leading group. Okay? So, which route is best on the board? Bar, board, bottom. Yes, it's right here. Bam, SN2 gives you your product. I'll do that. Okay, synthesis. Typically, synthesis, you're going to need to start with a neutral compound. And so we would show the neutral alcohol. Okay, and we would first treat the alcohol with what? NA. Uh, sodium would work to do what? To generate that, then come back with that. And there's your synthesis. Take that alcohol, generate the alkoxide, and then in the second step, come in with the alkyl bromide. not want to do it the other way. How do we do on that one? Uh, we looked at quats and we saw an interesting molecule. Well, it's more than a, not a molecule, it's a salt. Denatonium benzoate, world's most bitter compound. Uh, see, it's a quat here. I always sense you guys just don't know what salts are. A salt is a positive and a minus. Okay. Well, one of the simplest salts you can have is sodium chloride. Na plus Cl minus, right? But these can be that's these are just atomic. Uh, then you can have polyatomic, like sodium maybe acetate, right? That's polyatomic. It's organic. Okay. But the plus can also be polyatomic. Uh, for example, it can be ammonium acetate. Both of these are polyatomic. That's not organic though. This is where the plus and the minus are both organic, and they're actually quite large. But it's just a salt. It's plus and minus. There's lots of organic stuff here though. Uh, and that, that salt can exist, and it, it is a discrete chemical entity. It's got a name and it's quite bitter if you put it on the tongue. Uh, it's used for certain purposes. Uh, so quats are seen a variety of places. Uh, you've seen the acetylcholine before. You should see it again. Uh, choline has a quaternary ammonium ion. Uh, so look at nitrogen. What about carbon? Uh, formation of acetylide anions from terminal alkynes. Alkynes. Is this a good nucleophile for an SN2? Obviously not. There's no lone pair anywhere. Can we convert this to a lone pair compound? Yes. If we deprotonate the terminal H, we can make the acetylide anion. And then this would be a good nucleophile. It's got a lone pair. It's an anion, strong nucleophile. What reagent would do this? Well, this is back to where we ended during test two. This is the very last thing we looked at. And that was... Was it catalyst? Was it catalyst? Treating this with a strong base. This is a CID of about 25. Okay. What base did we use to do this? We used two different bases. Particle particle. Alkyne hand up. Here again, I told you that in a couple of weeks we will refer to this. And you guys will go. Lithium hydroxide. No, hydroxide is not strong enough. If you look back at the hand up, there was a big X on that line there. Tell me again. Lithium. 
Lithium butane was one of them, right? Lithium butane? Normal uh, lithium? It's not, called, it's not called lithium butane. So Indutyl lithium? Yes, that one. <laughs> Indutyl lithium or NaNH2, yes. And then we looked at the reverse reaction, the miner's helmet with the carbide, okay. All right. Something like NaNH2. Okay, alkyne end out. Did you, you didn't throw away the alkyne end out, did you? Mm. Okay, them is coming soon. All right, so we've already looked at this. Okay, or in butyl lithium, or okay. We talked about how hydroxide is no good. All right, but we can make the acetylide anion good nucleophile. Now we throw in a uh, tetrahydrocarbon in the leading group, and what can we do? Bam. What do leaving groups do? <laughs> they go bye bye bye. Okay. All right. And what's going to be the product here? Good old SN2. Everybody with me? Yeah. I'll just show the benzene as a fiddle. Benzene green, right? And this carbon is now bonded to that carbon, everybody agree? Mm -hmm. And so the tosylate, this carbon is bonded to that carbon. There's that carbon. And we're going to have, what else is on that carbon? A D and a, and an ethyl, yeah? What type of steric chemistry are we going to have? Yeah? And we just made that bond right there. Everybody good? Yes. Everybody good with that product? It's recording a version. No, it just seems so. It does. Yeah, I think it does. It does require inversion. I should say that. I'm, I'm not saying it should. Sure. Yeah. Does it require inversion? Yeah, SN2 comes with inversion, just like. Everybody good? Are you fix it? <laughs> All right, how about the next one? I don't believe you're good, but if you're not going to say anything, I will continue on. We're not good. Should it be switched? Yeah. Should it be dotted instead of? Solid. Dashed into solid because it inverts from a C to uh, Anybody else? To me again, I didn't quite hear you. So it's up to about dashed. Should it be dashed instead of bolded because it inverts from SN2? Oh. SN2 does an inversion. Yeah, I did invert. It's inverted. Uh, oh, okay. Is it a on the paper or lost the paper? And that changed the screen. It's inverted. Oh. I don't know if I switch. Oh, yeah, because it's pointing straight down. That was just side, that was straight up. Yes. SN2 is on the first. Yes. I mean, this is redundant. SN2 always comes with inverted. Right? I just use, usually I thought for whatever reason we had to switch the yeah one of the groups back, but maybe I'm not understanding. No, anybody got the sheet from two months ago? What color was it? The green. Can I, can I see them and uh, show them? Uh, show different inversions down here. Yeah, leaving group four, now leaving group back. Is that what you're talking about? Yes, sir. Yeah. 
It's on the left uh, side. It is in the Baby Groot back, now Nuclear Foul forward, comes, comes back side. How about this? Leaving Group up, how would Nuclear Foul come in? Yeah. It come in from back would be opposite. It's opposite side, I think, more appropriate if we call it back. So it's opposite of up. Down. Down. It's a version. Okay. But bold is still bold. Because, here we go, this elbow is forward. Leaving group is straight up. Okay? When nucleotide comes in straight down, it comes in straight down. It pushes, it pushes this off. But guess what? These things do that. They invert. <laughs> elbow down, it goes to elbow up. Elbow is forward. When it goes up, it is still forward. It's still forward. That's what's going on here. <laughs> Basically, that elbow group is over there. It's forward, but it's over there. When that, when that comes in, it just pushes it this way. Still forward, okay? It is inverted. Look at the green sheet. Another thing we can do here is this RS. Uh, oxygen is one, carbon is two. What else is here? A D and an undrawn H, which is three? D. D. Yeah. Undrawn H is how? Back. Back. This is what? S. S. Now, what I'm doing here doesn't work 100% of the time, but it works 99% of the time. It only works if the new group has the same priority as the leaving group. Does the new group have the same priority as the leaving group? Yes. yes. That's one. That's two. This three. How is the H? Back. 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 What is this? R. R. Maybe that will help convince you that it has been inverted. That's really a faulty thing because that doesn't work 100% of the time. I think I've told you about that. This only works if the new group has the same priority group as the leaving group. I could show you inversion where S still is S. That would be where if, if this is no longer high priority and so all, everything changes and it ends up being both S, even though there was inversion. But hopefully S to R maybe helps, will, will help convince you that it's conversion, uh, inversion. Indeed it is. Look at the green sheet. It doesn't all, okay, here's the take home guys. Don't fall into the trap that just because this is bold, this has to be dashed. Okay. Look at the green sheet. In many cases, yes. Let's try the one below. And we'll also say something else. Product down here. Remember cyanide anion. Okay. This is C N long here minus. What are we doing? Carbanions. We can generate a carbanion from a terminal alkyne. We also have it here. This you typically just buy. Okay? You would never start with ACN and generate the carbanion. You just buy this. Cyanide is very common. And boom! Kick off the leaving group. The leaving group is back, so how's the new group going to be? Four. Four. I'll just draw that as fennel. Boom, boom. And we can draw this forward. And I'll just show the cyanide, cyanide, cyano group now, condensed. SN2 with inversion. Dash became bolded. The leaving group is back. The new group came in forward. How's the leaving group up here? Is it forward or back? It's in the plane. Up there it's in the plane. And that's what led to that sort of, OK? Because in the plane, how does the nucleophile come in? It comes in in the plane, but just over there it's sort of moving, okay? And again, it's like this. If this is the board, something forward, when this comes in, it just pushes it that way for inversion, but it's still forward. Okay, so, see the difference here. When the leaving group is forward or back, that's when you can just switch. But you can't do it up there. Hopefully that made it clear. So don't fall in that trap and get those types of problems wrong. There was a question down here, though. I have a question, sir. 
What's DMSO? Good question. DMSO is just a solvent. It was on the solvent list I gave you in the physical properties handout way back when. Okay. Uh, dimethyl sulfoxide is a polar aprotic solvent. Good question. You often have to you'll often see solvents. You've got to recognize them, and when you see solvent, typically you just ignore it. Definition of solvent usually is it doesn't react. Now we will see sometimes where solvent will react. We will call it, give it a certain name. Yes, good question. When you see those along the way, you don't, don't get confused about it. You just recognize some common solvents. And guess what? That's why on the first hand down I gave you some common solvents. And I told you you don't have to memorize them, but just become familiar with them. These are very common ones. Okay? All right, uh, moving down, uh, next. Take a look at this mechanism for this reaction outcome. Now let's predict mechanism. Take this alkyl bromide. They just heated in ethanol. The ethanol is often just a solvent, but in this case, it's actually going to react. So here we go, it's a solvent that's reacting. We call this a solvolysis reaction. When it's like, wow, the solvent's reacting here. Because sometimes the solvent can, can do have dual roles. It can dissolve things, but it can also be a reactant. Alright? That's all it is. Just take this and heat it up in ethanol. And we it is known that two products are formed. Well, those are called regional isomers because the O ethyl group is bonded to two different regions. We saw regio isomers with alkene reactions. Okay. Regio isomers, they're constitutional isomers, but in the context of this reaction, we can call them regio isomers. Because they're not stereo isomers. They're totally different names. But you're also going to produce HBr. That's the phase of the leaving group and the fate of the H is here. So mechanism for this reaction. Is this, did, first off, is it a substitution reaction? Yes. 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 But if you just look right here, it used to be bromine under my hand, but now it's the oxygen. Okay? Substitution. Yes. You know two substitution mechanisms, SN1 or 2. Which one is this? SN1. What do we know about SN2? What's required for an SN2? Strong nucleophile. Strong nucleophile. Is ethanol a strong nucleophile? No. It's weak. So you can't do SN2. Game over. Right there tells you the mechanism. And that's the type of analysis you're going to have to do when you assess reaction and then proposing mechanisms. It's SN1. But guess what? The reaction outcome also tells, because if this was SN2, you would just attack here at kickoff leaving group and nucleophile would be bonded there. How in the world does the apparent nucleophile end up bonding over here? Well, it's SN1, and SN1 involves forming what? Carbocations. What are carbocations prone to doing? Rearranging. Rearranging. That's how the group got over there. Now let's do it. What's the first step of the mechanism? Separate the. What's the first step of an SN1 mechanism? The Yes. In the group leaves. Alright. Now you should have this in your notes. We did this earlier. We called it SN1. And yes, ionization. Okay, plus Br minus.
I'm not going to show mechanism for first product because I'm going to show it with the second one. And after we show it for the second one, you should certainly be able to do it with the first one. It's the same thing, except to get the first product, what happens next? Um, ethyl acetate attacks. Uh, not ethyl acetate, ethanol. Ethanol, ethanol attacks carbocation. Just like we would have done from alkene reactions. And ethanol is just like water. It's, it's a neutral, okay? This is neutral. Some of you guys will convert this to an anion. It's not an anion. To convert that to the oxygen anion, you need something like sodium metal or sodium hydride. It's not ionic. If it was, why would we need to treat an alcohol with sodium to make the anion? Okay. It's neutral. But neutral can add here. But before we do that, let's just work towards the second product. What do we, what can, what can happen here? Hydride shift. Hydride shift. H and the two electrons. That's essentially H and two electrons. Well, if you, that's hydride, right? Like sodium hydride? H and two electrons move. What does that give? is there, we try to draw it in, we can draw it in. We're back to the same old thing. Well, does that mean there's only one H here? No, there's two there. There's one there originally. There's two there now, but I only drew the one that I shifted. Okay. We're back to carbocation chemistry that we covered six weeks ago. Is this reasonable? We went from a secondary carbocation to what? First tertiary. Tertiary. Now what can happen? Now ethanol, okay, you see, you see, this will not do this and kick off the leaving group. If it did, that would be SN2. Conservative, backside attack, kick off leaving group. Ethanol won't do that. It's too weak and lazy. For a nucleophile to come in and kick off the leaving group, the nucleophile has to be what? Strong. Weak nucleophiles can't do that. But weak nucleophiles will get excited about a formal carbocation. See, that's just, right there, that's just partial plus. So it's not enough reactivity. It's too weak. It's not strongly attracted to partial plus. We just know this. It doesn't happen. But it will react here. And this adds here. Yes, what does that do? Yeah. Now bottom here is the oxygen, but the oxygen has an ethyl group, I would draw it out, and an H, and one lone pair left, and that's a positive oxygen. <coughs> step away from final product. Not that one, though. That's not the right one, is it? We're one step away from BR. That product. What can take the H so this oxygen can go back to neutral? Zero minus. Yes. Bam. The electrons behind. And that gives what? That product plus the HBR. Is a specific um, isomer favorite? What have we said before that maybe could help us in, for our class? We said that any time a carbocation could rearrange, that we should do that and call that the favorite. Yes. I would expect you to kind of suggest that the one on the right is the favorite product. Because the carbocation will rearrange. Okay. But actually, I think this reaction is going to give a mixture of those two. It all depends on how fast this rearranges. Because once this cation forms here, the ethanol could attack here. If it does, you're going to get which product? The first one. The first one. I'm not going to go through that because it's, all it is is just no rearrangement. You just attack here like we attack there. 
It all depends on how fast it rearranges. Because once this form, ethanol could attack here. That's also a carbocation. And that's how you can end up with both. But it's not going to attack there. Because a weak nucleophile will not displace a leaving group in a concerted backside attack. It's got to have a straw. If the reaction was not heated, then what if it were the first one? Or no? No, well, I would like to heat. Because if it's not heated, then there will not be enough energy for the hydrogen ships. Uh, well, let's ask this. What's the rate determining step of the entire process here? Do we have carbo cation carbo cation this is the rate determining step. Um, that's going to be sort of the most difficult. And it, to me, if, if that can occur, then that should be able to occur. If this can't occur, then it, we can't even talk about that because we may, we're not even going to get to that. But if this can occur, I think carbocation rearrangement should occur. You're going downhill, right? Going downhill shouldn't take much activation anymore. Okay, this is a this is a standard sort of SN1 mechanism. But the fact that we got regioisomers should tell you that. You don't get regioisomers with SN2. Because if it was SN2, the nucleophile would be the same place that the Lehman group would be. Okay? You only get regioisomers with SN1. Uh, it's called a solvolysis reaction because it looks like what ethanol often just a solvent, but here it reacted. Okay. What if this has stair chemistry involved? Okay, I didn't show any stair chemistry up there. What would the stair chemistry of the products look like? We can just focus on the first product. How would this what kind of stair chemistry would the first product have? The BR would be the O. First product. Would any change occur here for the first product? No, no chemistry took place there. See, in the first product, you have two chiral carbons. These two up there. Over here, there'd be no change. What, kind of, what change would be here? How would we show the product? I just showed a generic up there, the carbon with the O ethyl group. Would it be RS or both? Both. Both, why? Yeah. How do you attack a carbocation? Either side. Both sides, okay? So if we show that product, you can show it down here, I'll show it here for some space. It would be. There'd be no change there. And over here, it would be the OFL would be Ford, but we would also get a product that looked like what? No change over here, but the OFL could also be back, right? This is the first product that you would get. Both of the, these are stereoisomers of the first product. What's the relationship between these two? Relationship? Epimers. Epimers, more broadly. And antimers. Diastereomers. Diastereomers, and yes, there are also epimers. Okay. How about the stereochemistry of the second product? What would it look like? Trick question, right? The second product has no chiral carbon. Look whatever you want, as long as you get everything connected. There's no stereochemistry in the second product. Everybody agree? No chiral carbon at all. You can show the ethyl front or back. It's the same compound. Right? Right? Just like I can show you a paper clip like this or that. It doesn't matter. It's just the same thing. So the second product has no stereochemistry. Uh, what's the rate equation for the above solvolysis reaction? Rate equals what? Some type of constant times... 
alkyl bromide. And what else? That's it. Does the amount of ethanol affect the rate? No. It's SN1. It's just the alkyl bromide concentration. What type of nucleophiles react strictly by SN1 mechanism? We, yes, we, because if the nucleophile was strong, what would be the mechanism? SN2. Okay. Hopefully, you understand how we're saying that. We said SN2 requires strong, but now we're also saying that if it's strong, it will be SN2. Strong nucleophiles are like bullies. Okay? Okay? It's like, got a strong nucleophile here. I'm strong. Wait a minute, I'm going to ionize. Too bad, boom, I kicked you off. You didn't have time to ionize. Strong, we're just going to stick your nose in, backside here, okay? Boom. Strong. Strong will be SN2, SN2 requires strong. If the nucleophile is weak, it's going to have to be SN1. Those weak nucleophiles are lazy. They will only attack carbocations. A weak nucleophile will not attack this. Right. So whenever they like, try to like determine a mechanism, like should that be the first step? We should like look at the. That should be a number of sort of first steps. This is one. Okay. There's other things. Read your iceberg form. Stereo chemistry. Right. If you see a reaction and you see inversion, that means what, what mechanism have? That's SN2. Okay, there's a number of things. If you see a reaction and the product is receiving it, what does that tell you? That's one. Looks like you've got a carbocation and that's how it became receiving. That's the SN1. Okay, a number of questions. And throughout the handout, we've sort of shown look at each of it, those types of things. Uh, so carbocation chemistry. That's in one. Summing it all up. Here we go. Things we were just talking about. Up to sum it up. Substrates we're leaving here from primary carbon will be on the SN2. Everybody agree? Because you don't want to make a primary carbocation. Leaving group on tertiary carbon on the SN1. Why? Does it ever do SN2 on tertiary halide or pseudo halide? Right? Substrates for leaving group on secondary carbon can undergo either. And at this point, you're going to have to look at other things. For example, primary chemical outcome, rate information, other things. But secondary carbon is a little more difficult because both can occur. With strong nucleophiles, reaction would always be bimolecular. Strong nucleophiles are like, hey, I'm going to be involved. You can't exclude me. Here I come. So it's going to be bimolecular, either SN2 or what is E2? They're both bimolecular. The weak nucleophiles, which are lazy, reaction will be unimolecular. See, these guys won't get off the sofa. They're too lazy. Unimolecular, SN1 or E1. As long as the substrate is secondary or tertiary, because if the substrate is primary, the reaction has to be bimolecular. So we have some exception there. Of course, a bimolecular reaction with a weak nucleophile would be quite difficult. You could end up with, with a sort of reaction, a reagent. You'd be like, is this really going to work? I don't think it's going to work. OK? Question. Leaving group on tertiary? What do we know about leaving groups on tertiary? Bimolecular, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. and what were your choices? Bimolecular? Yeah, but, if, but what do we say about leaving group on tertiary carbon? 
Can't do. So just reading that, what do you think the mechanism will be? No. Strong nucleophile is bullied. Strong nucleophile will be bimolecular. Remember? Here I come. You can't keep me away. I'm going to come in backside. Bam. What's, so what's going to be the reaction? What? No, the be reaction. The, the answer is right up there. What if we... Do we consider chlorine a good leaving group or like it's in the middle? Uh, what do we say about it? Chlorine? It's, not, chlorine. As good as it's not as good as bromine, but it's better than fluorine. That's it, exactly. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But if you look back at how it was shown, there was sort of a clear divide between chlorine and fluorine. Yeah. Okay, what type of mechanism will occur? I'll show product here. Including steric chemistry. Is you got uh, hydroxide instead of water. Product over here. It's, it's going to be backwards and essentially. SN1 reaction, the second one that we did with the iodine, um, w could there possibly be carbocation rearrangement? Okay. It's yes, it possibly it could be, but let's look at that closer. What do you want to rearrange to? That would be the carbocation. Mm -hmm. Just to this. Oh, I guess it's the same thing. Okay. It's the same. Yeah. It would be the same. 
same hardwood gutter. Yes. Uh -huh. Any other questions? Uh, fourth one over there. Product. No reaction. Product. No reaction. No reaction. Product. Well, you don't do SN2 with we'll tertiary halide, so that's out. Why is it not SN1? Because of the strong What type of nucleophile are affected by SN1? Strong nucleophile. Weak. 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 What type of nucleophile do we have? Strong. strong. So that's no good either. Yeah. Either, there's no substitution there. The one that works is E2. Okay. E2. What is that? Well, that takes us to our next handout. This is, this, is, this is not going to give substitution. All right. Uh, so there's some uh, homework questions below. I will send out answers to these. I do have answer key to that. Okay. to the elimination handout. Uh, the beginning of this is just like the beginning of substitution. General line reaction. Okay? We're going to have leaving groups. Leaving group chemistry. Petrus or carbon with leaving groups. Okay. We're going to have something with a long pair, except we're not going to call it a nucleophile. Here we're going to call it a base. Because it's going to eventually take an H. Okay? And we're going to re remove it, eliminate the leaving group. Okay? We're not replacing it, we're removing it. But we're also removing a beta hydrogen. Okay? There's, a, there's H here, it's now gone. The base takes it. And then the leaving group is gone. Elimination reactions give what type of products? Alkenes. Alkenes. So we're going back, you know, two months ago, six weeks ago, we were looking at reactions of alkenes. Now we'll see how to make alkenes, commonly made by elimination reactions. But it's leaving group chemistry. Two possible mechanisms. One's going to be called E1. One's going to be called E2. Very similar to the terminology and things we saw with SN1 and SN2. All right? Please look and let's do both mechanisms and then let's ask which one makes better sense for the model reaction. Okay? Very similar things to consider in these reactions. Great steric chemistry. Well, there will be some new things. Okay, guys, please be looking at this. We'll, we'll get going here. Uh, see some of your lab upstairs. Ready to go at 2.30?